So some of you who have been uh, watching for a while on my uh, game stream and whatnot have noticed that there is a uh, a possum visiting us. Well, a couple of them. One of them is very notable because she is uh, got a pouch full of joeys. And we don't know how much longer they're going to be in there, but they're going to be in there for a while. And the exciting news is we've been leaving an apple out for them, mainly because the cats won't mess with an apple, but there'll be food that they can eat that the cats won't let, you know, they can, the cats can come over and empty all the, the food bowls, but the apple will still be there because, you know, it's, cats aren't going to eat an apple. It took her about a month to figure out what the apple was for. Oh no. But she finally did. Um, let me get, got a guy, a video. Yes, we do have video. Let's bring that up here. Um, and there she, she takes her a second here. Um, and you can notice she is, she is stuffed. She has got babies everywhere. Um, but you give her a few seconds and she's, she's, it takes her a while to get around to this. Is it possums that like after their babies come out of the pouch, just they ride around yep, hanging off right of on mom? The back. Yep. Oh no, that's, that's the pouch video. Yeah. You can actually see the, the Joey's in the pouch right there as part of that. Um, okay. Here's, here's, here's the Apple video. Um, so there she is. She's figured out. There's the apple. She, she, go in mouth. Okay. Okay. Pick up. Okay. Apple going. Okay. Well, okay. Maybe, uh, what do, what am apple do? How does this work? How do I operate this? <laughs> for, for noms. However, for, for noms. and she noms? knocks over the water dish. And if you look there in the background, you can see Garfield has been watching the entire time. Setting on his little, he's just like, the f, f, f were you doing? Oh. oh, did she abscond with the apple? Yep, she she just grabbed the apple and she went away. Which I've discovered, and we're going to have to make some adjustments. Um, She destroyed the apple. She had, she ate like half of it. The rest of it was just a pile of apple. So I'm going to have to. We're, we're going to put them in a bowl. We're going to cut up the apple and put it in a bowl from now on so that they don't leave a pile of It's apple. crazy how it gets more and more elaborate, isn't it? Yes. Because when I started out, when my first feral Houdini showed up, I left out a bowl of kibble. Right. You're like, oh, and then let's I was help. Like, you know what? It's a dry climate. He probably needs water. Need some water. So I left out right. a bowl of water. Then I started giving him wet food. Then one night, oh, my God, the wet food froze. So you got a heating. So we had to get the heated. We had to get the heated dish, and then you know he started hanging around. So we had to get the little heated house. Yep. yep. And now there's a four-story tower and a scratching <sighs> post and a heated dish and a cot and cooling mats. <laughs> Tara, it just it just snowballs on you. I think we might be pushovers, but they're sweet and they're cute. All right. Well, that having been said, let's get to the uh the news this week because um got a fun one to start off with. I was just dying laughing reading this story, so that's a good way good way to start off. Uh let's get the intro rolling. Each week, Catherine, the radio diary audience about the worldwide interwebs. Find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment we like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm gonna start in uh, in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Um, okay. Am I correct? That's the city of brotherly, brotherly love, right? Is that Pittsburgh? That's Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Okay. Well, close enough. It's in the same area. Don't say that to a Pennsylvania. <laughs> I'm going. They get will letters. stab you. I'm going to get yeah. stabbed and letters and letters about being stabbed. Um. They will throw batteries at you. This guy, we, we've been hearing stories about, you know, the orcas destroying yachts and shit. And we're like, fucking go orcas. Well, who thought, who would have figured we don't really need an orca to do this. We just need a drunk guy who has no idea how to fucking pilot a yacht. <laughs> this is amazing. It's probably about the same level of intelligence as an orca. Drunk man stole an 82-foot yacht 
from Pittsburgh Marina floated it into a river wall. Now, you might want to ask, why did they say floated? Well, guess what? This gets beautiful. 82-foot yacht was stolen by the intoxicated man at a Pittsburgh Marina Friday morning. Officials were called to the Lockwall Marina. Captain of the yacht normally lives aboard, but wasn't there Thursday night. The marina manager let him know in the morning it was gone. So already we're all we're we're off to to a start where you're the captain of the yacht. It's not your yacht. Your job is to be the captain, and you've done fucked up your job because that's like not only not only is your job gone, your house is gone at the same time. Her pissed. I gotta find a new job. <laughs> I'm oh. I'm still kind of on that there and look I, I know I'm going to get comments for this but I'm a New Yorker and more assholes I'm still kind of stuck on that there's someone in Pittsburgh with a 92 foot yacht <laughs> 82 but still yes yes 82 um what are you minute. doing in Pittsburgh uh he called the police we called the police they were well aware of it at the time but then the weird part is it ended up just floating Right next to River Rescue. So River Rescue, I guess two of the medics went out there and looked at the boat and said, why is it backing up into there? Then I got a call on the radio about a boat stolen. They just walked on and they arrested one person. So not only did he float the, the yacht, it floated right next to the cops. He floated That's the like something out of <laughs> the office. <laughs> Like Jim is talking about how Michael stole a yacht and it just floats by behind him. <laughs> River Rescue detained the man after boarding the yacht. After being cleared by emergency responders, he was taken to Allegheny County Jail. The man arrested is Michael Fisher, 39. He's charged with theft by unlawful taking, which I I love that very legal-esque term, theft by unlawful what, taking. It, isn't all theft unlawful taking? Uh, receiving stolen There's property. something on the news today. I saw an infomercial today for an anti-choking device, which seems like a great, useful little device. But they talked about how choking is one of the top three causes of unintentional injury or death to children. And I'm like, <laughs> the, do we what's need the implication? The word? What's the implication for the other right. option? Why do we need the word unintentional? <sighs> um, so it, this gets better. She's 82 feet long, one of the biggest boats in the Pittsburgh pool. But as far as starting or not, there's a whole entire sequence of events that have to happen for the engines to actually fire. And the people that were on board tried to do everything they could to do that. Circuit breaker flipped, the fire suppression monkeyed around with. We have a book that says all about diesel engines and everything. The book was actually open. And someone was trying to read how to start the diesel engine. So wait, it's like the war rig in Fury Road. Like you have to know the combination of switches. <laughs> well, I, I love, I love the best. The best part is he's drunk out of his ass, and he's sitting there trying to learn from a book how to steal the yacht. That's like, that's hard mode. That's beyond hard mode. <laughs> oh, this is why, like, every summer Sirius XM has a Yacht Rock channel. This is why it's a mistake. Um, there's the signs that the captain saw on board suggested to him there were the suspect wasn't alone. One person doesn't like open up four or five bottles, and there are different items that are on the boat that some could be male, some could be female. And there's some other stuff that like somebody tried dyeing their hair. What? <laughs> How long did they have the boat for? I don't know. And where did all the other people go? Are they still on the boat? <laughs> they might either that or they're in the water. Oh my god. The fuck? Yeah, I just drunk and be like i can figure this out okay step one. Oh, the unearned confidence of the drunk St um find the keys oh fuck because i fucking love it it couldn't they couldn't get it started so it just sort of floated away <laughs> 
Oh, this isn't the only time the yacht has been in the spotlight. Kernahan will be appearing in some upcoming episodes of Mayor of Kingstown, which are shot here in Pittsburgh. He's going to be on that Jeremy Renner show. Oh, okay. I don't even know where you watch that. I just keep seeing ads for it. <laughs> Next up, this is from... I bet, uh, you, I bet you Renner arranged this whole thing just to promote his show. Next up, we're in uh, Hobie Sound, Florida. Um, you remember Friday? That was a great movie. I fucking love Friday. Yeah. Remember that bit? I was like, last Friday? Yeah, I remember last Friday. <laughs> you remember, how the hell do you get fired on your day off? This is like that, only so much better. This guy, the worst luck in the entire fucking world. Man arrested after breaking into unlocked bank. A man is, is breaking in. Man is now under arrest following an unusual incident in Martin County where he broke into an unlocked bank after hours, but did not take anything. Investigators report the alarm. The Wells Fargo and U.S. Route 1 alerted deputies an hour after the break-in occurred, which is weird. By the time they arrived, the Finally. suspect uh, identified as Colton Van Hohenstein. I think I said that right. Um, has already fled the scene. The break-in attack happened on Saturday. The surveillance footage showed the masked man entering the bank, searching through the drawers and cabinets, all of which were empty before leaving. So, he found a bank that was unlocked. He thought, this is the greatest day of my life. He put on a mask after he was already caught on security cam without a mask, went into the bank, to get the money, there is no money. But now you are, you, you, you've, so you, you're going to jail for nothing. For fucking yeah, nothing. Here's the thing. What crime was committed? Burglary. Breaking and entering. Even no, without the breaking. The bank was not locked. Even without the breaking, it's still considered burglary. See, that's bullshit. <laughs> If it's not locked, well, here's the. Th I don't think right. that's a crime. All right, do, do you really want to? If you leave your front door unlocked and somebody walks in, are you going to say the same thing? I mean, if they walk in and walk back out, I'm not going to love it. But they have not committed a crime. <laughs> well, it it actually we is. did the whole thing with the la the whole thing with the Lamborghini last week. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the thing is, doors. The whole concept of doors and locks. Those things are incredibly easy to get through. Somebody can just kick your front door open. It's not hard to do. But the fact that you close the door just by itself. Well, I'll just I'll just sleep like a baby tonight. Thank it's, you. It's 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 a social doors and locks are more of a social thing of saying you are not allowed in here. And that's what the law looks at. If the door is closed and you are not authorized to be inside and you know you're not authorized to be inside. All right, but it's the door like, to the bank is also closed but unlocked during operating hours. Did it? I don't know. Uh, Saturday. Well, it depends on right after hours. Well, Saturday, when the after, bank when the bank is open is open. Yes, the doors are still closed. But you're allowed to be there. You are authorized to be there. I'm just saying. That's what the I open sign a, is for. I don't think that should be a crime. Going into the bank and rifling around looking for something to take and can't find anything? You didn't take anything. <laughs> they tried to. <laughs> like when I was in retail, your whole thing was if you had a shoplifter, you were supposed to be passive aggressive at them until they got annoyed and threw whatever threw down whatever they were going to steal. Because as long as they didn't leave the store with it, they had not stolen anything. This is like, you know, is it really attempted murder if nobody died? I mean. <laughs> well, that's the attempted is doing a lot of heavy lifting there. But that's different because if you're going to try to kill somebody, they're probably going to be harmed. Nobody was harmed. <laughs> like if he punched a guy on the way in, fine, that's assault. So you're but saying like nobody got hurt. You're saying because he was very bad at robbing a bank, he should get a get he should get a mulligan on this one. And 
And, you know, whoever worked at the bank was very bad at locking the bank. Look, and since when do we feel sorry for banks around here? Let's let's just let him come back and say two or three months. He's got some practice under his belt. We'll try this whole bank robbery thing again. <laughs> then we can charge. I know. I know it's about intent, guys. I know he intended to steal. I understand. <laughs> I'm just saying. It seems a little messed up to me. It's a do over. <laughs> Time out! I wasn't ready! Especially since it's just a fucking bank. Uh, fair enough. It's not like the money's not insured. Even if he stole money, that money's insured. Yeah. Fuck the bank. Fuck the bank. And it's Wells Fargo. Just side note, did you hear about the fucking guy, Wells Fargo? Oh my god. No. Uh, guy, I, I know you shouldn't actually do this anymore, but he wrote a physical check to pay for something because he's an older guy, retired. Someone stole his check and changed it from $82 to $45,000. No. And they let him cash it. And now Wells Fargo is like, no, you missed the deadline to, to claim that is stolen. We're not giving you your $45,000 back. Fuck you, Wells fucking Fargo. I love that currently in the chat, someone said, is it bad that I want Tara to be my lawyer? And two <laughs> minutes later, someone said, no offense, Tara, but I'm never hiring you as my lawyer. I mean, hey. Uh, if we have a moment for a little aside, I my, my dad actually really wanted me to be a lawyer. <laughs> and uh, when I was a kid, I was in the gifted and talented class because I was a nerdy kid. Mm -hmm. And we had to do like a mock trial where we had to compete mm -hmm. against other schools all across the county, and they gave you the case. Now, in re retrospect, this shit was flawed from the start because they designed the case so that either the prosecution or defense could win depending on your performance, which means they built in reasonable doubt. Oh, shit. So I was the lead prosecutor. I'm in fifth grade. <laughs> what, you're, in fifth grade, you're what, like 10? Something like 10 or 11. Halfway yeah. through this case... The reasonable doubt hits me, hits my little 10 year old brain. And I have a full fucking existential crisis <laughs> because I'm trying to put an imaginary innocent person in prison for, for <laughs> like a mugging. None of it's real. How did they not know I had depression and anxiety? I don't know. How did they not clock that shit? I don't know. I had a full crisis. I threw the trial. I would have been disbarred. I fucking got there and I threw the trial. Oh my and god. And that's when I was like, yeah, maybe I want to be an artist. <laughs> this isn't for me. <laughs> we learned so much about you each week, Tara. <laughs> I'm wait I don't know if I've told that story before. I'm waiting for someone to tell me I have. No, you haven't. I've never mm -hmm. heard that one before. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Back to Florida, yet again, um, ambulances are not your Uber, especially when you steal one from the children's hospital. No. Woman steals, well, Florida woman steals ambulance, leads deputies on wild chase. She stole the vehicle from a children's hospital in Fort Myers in a pursuit captured on video. Florida woman was arrested after stealing an ambulance from a children's hospital deputies on a wild chase ariel a martian lee choir i think i said the right choir or queer choir q i e r or uh, q u i r -E. it looks like choir it looks like choir le choir okay ariel Marchand le choir oh that is french as fuck that name <laughs> ariel, oh, oh, oh. 30 years old named ariel that would have been 1994 i'm just saying like half the channel right now is going, I don't get it. And then the other half is going, I want to be where the people are. So anyway. <laughs> but it's, I think she's just, I think she's just French as fuck. Cause it's also Marchand Lacroix. 1994 though. Come on. Um, hmm. Allegedly stole the emergency vehicle from Gasolino Children's Hospital Thursday morning. Deputies tracked it via GPS to a nearby gas station. When deputies confronted her, she fled. Amos saw the road, running red lights, going to end up killing someone. It's purposely, recklessly driving crazy. They pursued the ambulance. Uh, she was swerving between lanes, banging into curbs, and nearly flipping the vehicle over. 
She pulled over at one point. But when deputies approached, she took off again, turning on the emergency lights. So she was doing that thing, like when you're picking up your buddy, and just when he gets an inch away from the door handle, you pull up a foot. <laughs> and then he runs and reaches for the door handle, and you pull up a foot. I actually, I think what happened Cops was love that. She, she was trying to turn on the emergency lights, but she didn't know where it was. So she was being safe. She brought the vehicle to, to a complete stop and then found the, the emergency light switch and then continued going. Thank goodness for safety. <laughs> no one was injured with the chase and the ambulance was empty. Thank fucking God. You stole a fucking ambulance. That's bad Someone. enough. From the children's hospital. From the children's hospital. Like, th there's some kids somewhere. Need to get to the hospital. And what did you do? Of all the ones to steal. I understand. No, I understand. Poor tiny, poor tiny Tim. I kind of understand why this happens. Because, like, there are levels to this. Like, level one is, hey. There's a vehicle with its door open and keys in. Why doesn't everybody steal these? I'm going to steal this. It's the perfect crime. Level two is, wait a minute. What's a GPS? And then mm. it's all downhill from there. It's all downhill. Also, from there. there should be a level of, am I the worst fucking person ever? Really? It should. Yeah. Also, the chat is just lousy with Madam Web jokes right now. <laughs> Why? Okay, I'm missing, the, I'm missing that on that one. Why? Because in the movie, she's an ambulance paramedic. I did not see the movie because it was a bad oh, movie. I, I just watched it because it came out on Netflix. So it, it hit Netflix. So I was like, fuck it. Let's do this thing. I will say Dakota Johnson should get the Oscar. <laughs> I find no complaints with her performance because she 150% does not want to be there, but it works. And I appreciate her. She got a page. I mean, she got fucking paid. It's a crap movie, but she got paid. Ain't gonna, yep. I ain't gonna shit on her for that, man. Um, next up this, I'll get more Florida this week. Jesus Christ. Um, so we've, Oh, I don't know if this falls under bless your heart or what, but uh, this guy. So we've had often, we've had more than you'd think, people trying to escape the police by climbing into the ceiling tiles. Just a complete uh, misunderstanding of what the ceiling tiles are. But this one has a nice little cherry on top this week. Hiding from police. No, thanks. Go away. I don't, I don't want, don't, I don't need info. I don't need to be notifications. Fuck off. So um, many pop-ups. So I many. know. Man hiding for police forgets to turn off cell phone and it rings. Uh, let's see. It's here. Yeah. Okay. A uh, fugitive hiding in a Florida business unwittingly gave away his location when he forgot to turn off his cell phone. It rang just at the right time. Who the fuck uses the ringer on their cell phone anymore? Welcome to the century, bozo. Are you kidding me? The awkward moment happened around 2 p.m. on Saturday, June 5th. as deputies were searching big fish bait and tackle in Lakeland. That just, that's evocative as hell right there. A disturbance had been reported near the shop, and it was determined the 38-year-old suspect, who was also wanted on 38? charges. 38? I was going to say, this dude better be 70 using his ringer. 38? <laughs> was also wanted on charges, including trafficking and stolen goods. Deputies went to a business nearby where the suspect is employed. When they got there, they were able to confirm that he was seen entering the business, but never leaving. Deputies conducted a quick... He went to his job? He went to his job, yes. He worked at the big, big fish bait and tackle. Deputies con uh, conducted a quick search of the building, but couldn't find him. Uh, Polk County Fire Rescue then summoned to survey the site with an infrared camera, which can detect heat sources through the walls. They, too, came up empty. <clears throat> That's when deputies noticed ceiling tiles were disturbed, and then they heard the sound of a cell phone ringing in the ceiling. 
That's what you get for using your fucking ringer in 2024. God damn it. Did, did people still pay for ringtones now or did they figure out they don't have to do that? Do you remember that? Yeah. The kids don't know. We used to literally pay money. What is this? So we that shit? Everybody, everybody you knew that I had an app where I could make my own, but like everybody you knew, you could set a different song to play when they called you. So you knew who was calling by what song was playing. Now, if my phone makes a sound, I will throw it against the fucking wall. That arc, 10 years. Answering the phone is so 2005. Um, they spotted a hand sticking out from under the insulation. Thankfully, the hand was attached to a body, not some random insomatic hand that would have taken the situation in a whole other direction. Um, yeah. Suspect was removed from the ceiling and charged with resisting an officer, felony criminal mischief for causing about $1,000 of damage to his employer's ceiling. Multiple counts of violation of probation for burglary, providing false information to a pawnbroker, and trafficking in stolen property. Can we just side note? That whole shit where you steal some shit and you take it to a pawnbroker? Do you, like, is your entire idea of how crime works from television? That's not, they, they check I that didn't know shit. Lying, I didn't know lying to a pawnbroker was a crime. Mm. I legitimately didn't know that. Because you're trying to sell them stolen goods. That could get them in trouble too. Thank God I've gotten away with it so many times. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know that was a crime. That's interesting. Because I did think it was like on television where you kill somebody and then sell their jewelry. I thought people did that. Nope. Huh. Nope. Not unless. Good I mean, to know. Yeah. Fences are a thing, but they're not. You just go to the pawnbroker and be like, okay, you know. Well, I've learned something today. Is what? <sighs> huh. You I should be glad I'm not your lawyer. Because, God damn it. I love how his first response is, the cops are here. I'm going to climb in the ceiling and hide until they go away. Yeah. <laughs> Your boss, just so you know, they're going to sell you out. Oh, God, yes. Uh, oh, Even God. if you work for a small, like, I, I have great employers. Very nice people. They are my friends. If I committed a bunch of crimes and then tried to hide in their ceiling, they would sell me out. And I couldn't be mad at them for it. The cats would sell you out, Tara. They'd be up there trying to play with you. Yeah, Simba would be up there yelling at me. And that would be the end of me. Yeah. It'd be Simba pawing at the ceiling going, Meow, and they'd be like, there she is. All right. Next one. I know I have on quite a few occasions said the, expressed this sentiment, but and and it seems a bit you know hypocritical considering I am on the YouTube, but YouTube was a mistake. Um, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if this is a YouTuber or a TikToker or an Instagram or whatever, but the, the whole video, it was a mistake. And here's why. Um, there is an ever increasing need to attempt to one up someone else to get noticed on these services. Mm -hmm. And um, that leads you to doing things like, oh, I don't know. Um, breaking a UNESCO protected historical site with parkour. We're still doing parkour. Jumping from building to building in an ancient city might seem like a dream for those who practice parkour, a sport that involves making it past obstacles, but it can cause damage to historic buildings. A London based parkour group. Oh my God. Team fat. P H A T. We're we're still doing fat with a pH. Did this... these people just fall out of a time machine <laughs> from 2003? Oh, they're going to be really surprised when they hear about Timberlake. Um, yeah, kind of ruin the tour. Ruin the tour. <laughs> um, running and climbing through the streets and over. Uh, yeah, visited the ancient Italian city city of Matera. Uh, one of the free runners caused a segment of a historic building to fall off. That's a polite way of saying he done broke that shit. 
sending both himself mm -hmm. and the building part crashing to the ground. Uh, Matera, a city of stone, which dates back to the Paleolithic era, it's located in the uh, Basilicata uh, region of southern, I think I said that right, Basilicata, yeah, region of southern Italy. 1993, it was granted UNESCO World Heritage Status, and this was the European Capital of Culture in 2019. A video of parkour stunts in the ancient city was posted by Team Fat on YouTube two months ago, along with a caption explaining they were, quote, in the beautiful city of Matera, where one of their members, Devin McIntosh, quote, had a scary fall that could have been really bad. The video shows the free runner jumping off the building, attempting using a stone ledge to help him get to the other building across the street, but the ledge could not withstand his force and dramatically broke off. Boy, filming our crime spree was a brilliant idea. Read the next sentence. An off-camera member of the team suggests they, quote, hide the evidence. Step one, stop filming. Because you know what you are now? An accessory after the fact. Just the fact that you mentioned hide the evidence, you're in trouble. Because just mm -hmm. saying that out loud, in the process of committing a crime, it could be argued you have committed another crime. Next to a camera, you dumb <laughs> shit. This is only oh. okay when Spider-Man does it because... Mysterio is pretending to destroy Europe. In if you're Mar not Spider-Man, it's not okay. In March 2023, a Team Fat member jumped into a canal in Venice, following which I think we reported on that. Luigi uh, Brugnaro commented, this subject should be giving a certificate of stupidity, I'm trying to identify him to denounce him and his companion that made the stupid video for social. Yeah, I think we we've had these idiots on here before. I remember the canal one. I seem, I seem to remember the canal one. They're still called Team Fat, though, huh? They stuck with that. Because, like, Kimora Lee Simmons left that in the 2000s. At the start of the video, one of the Team Fat members says, As some of you know, we've been banned from Venice and we can never go back. That, Look, I'm not going to bag on parkour because I can't do it. But if your whole thing is I bounce off of buildings for YouTube. Yeah. I, fine. It's a living, right? I've done stupider things for money. Right. But maybe just bounce off of new buildings for YouTube. <laughs> what's, what's, what's blowing my mind here is the, in order to operate, you can't just put videos on YouTube anymore and just get, you know, you have to have a Patreon or you have to actually have a sponsor because just the plain advertising alone, it's crap. I mean, it's there, it's money, right. but it's not a lot. It's, it's crap. So that means someone somewhere saw their bullshit in Venice and decided, hey, would you like to sign this uh, sponsorship deal so we can keep letting you do this ridiculous bullshit? I got 20 bucks on Elon. All right, last one this week. This is both a combination of fuck this guy and dipshit. Um, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Fortunately, no one was hurt except a bunch of cars, which is, is good. Um, but on the other hand, fuck this guy. Uh, man allegedly sets ex-girlfriend's home on fire. Now, that's not the funny part. We'll get to the funny part. This, that's not funny. That's not funny. Right. Police say Artemio Sanchez Ortega is facing arson charges after he dumped gasoline all over his ex-girlfriend's property and then lit a match. The three vehicles in her driveway were destroyed and the flames spread to her home where she was inside with her four kids. Yeah. A neighbor's surveillance camera showed the man who was on fire hopping over the fence to get away. APD said that's Sanchez Ortega, and they're still looking for him. So, and even better, he apparently was um, drunk. So, the, you set yourself on fire. 
The victim told KO before she didn't know what was happening, but the arrest warrant state she believed Sanchez Ortega had been drinking. So he got drunk, got a bunch of, of gasoline. And, uh, what's the age? I think it's uh, 48. Yeah, he's 48. Which already, number one, how do you have the energy to do this shit? Right? Yeah, because that's about my age. And I, I, if I'm drinking that much, I'm uh, not running around committing arson. I'm going to have a nap. I'm yeah. going to have it. I might, I might have something salty. Like, I, I might need some chips at that point. And French fries. Yeah, I, I would need something salty. and I would need, like, some Waffle House food if I'm mm. that drunk. And then I'm going to need a nap. But no, you get drunk, got gasoline, hop the fence, dump gasoline everywhere, and lit your own damn ass on fire. Now, here's my question. Do we think that he was drunk and clumsy and thus spilled gasoline on himself? Or do we think he had spilled liquor on himself prior to the arson? It's anyone's guess. <laughs> like, you, you think before you do flammable things don't be covered in flammable it it just but of course drunk makes a lot of bad decisions drunk is one of those yeah i, I know drunk this is the point of drunk where it's like well i'm already here <laughs> and i got gasoline on me but i no might turn back now no turning back now i might as well what's the worst that could happen you could set yourself on fire. Which is going to make him pretty easy to or find. Or kill your ex-girlfriend's four children. Oh, yeah. You are going to jail for the all of the jail. Because this kind of shit, with the arson and shit, oh, you're, you're jail, bye bye Goodbye, bye, jail. You could have killed four Kids, children. Yes. This is why we choose the bear. <laughs> The fucking bear can't light your house on fire. Bear, no thumbs. Less of a threat. Just on that alone. Just all the other, you know, lots of other reasons, but just on the, the thumbs thing. That that scales down the threat considerably. The bear also doesn't want to light your house on fire. No, the bear doesn't have, the bear doesn't hold grudges. No. The bear doesn't care. The bear is just like, fuck bear you. bear just wants a picnic basket. Yeah, this bear's like, are, are you bugging me? Fuck you, go away. No, I said go away. No, fuck you, go away. Okay, bye-bye. Go away. That's, you can throw the pie. That's right. Fuck and then you. go away. You're annoying me. I I understand the bear. The bear and I, we Bears, share in fact, do just want us to stop lighting stuff on fire. That's true, yes. One of them quite famously. He, he's very big on that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's his whole brand. Which is... Not just the fact that I'm going to burn my ex-girlfriend's house down to get drunk and, and just act on this. The fuck are you drinking? What the fuck? You, what the fuck is wrong with you? I think I think we all know why she dumped you. Are you sure? Because I'm puzzled over there. I'm 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 scratching he my seems head like a catch. I'm scr I'm 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 bad. I'm stumped. Why'd you let that one slip through your fingers? Because uh, the fingers were covered in gasoline, probably. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when they find him, and they're going to find you, because I can, mm -hmm. already, I can already tell you they're going to find him, because he's the, the reason why. He set himself on fire while drunkenly committing arson. They're going to find you. One, you're not smart. Two, chances are you have rather severe burn that will need medical attention if you don't want to die of sepsis. Well, they weren't. He, they, apparently, they weren't bad. They just still, but there, there's video. They weren't terrible. Either way, even a minor burn, if yeah. you don't deal with that shit, infection is a thing. True. I mean, I'd also fuck him, but still. And neosporin tubes are not that big. So, uh, well, the, the first thing we learned this week is um, if you are getting drunk, don't get angry. Go to Waffle House. I mean, yeah, I mean, just people... eat your feelings like a normal person, right? Just eat four pints of ice cream and watch Bridgerton and cry. Ooh, ooh. 
Oh, you're, you're killing me because, all right, what are we talking about drinking? Because if we're talking, like, I do the beer. I'm not doing ice cream after beer. That's going to make my asshole. You're talking about drinking. That, that's going to make my what asshole talking do about some drinking? incredible things. Just eat I don't... your feelings and watch rom-coms and cry. Like, that. that's. You don't got to drink anything. That's Drink that... water. <laughs> We've learned maybe skip the ice cream if you're like lactose intolerant. We we've learned that um YouTube was a mistake. But we keep <laughs> We've that. learned that a few times. It's a, it's remedial at this point. We've yeah. learned that in 2024 there's somebody who still actually has their ringer on. I think that yeah, you're right Tara, that's kind of the most astonishing part about that whole story. I was gobsmacked enough a couple weeks ago when we found a 35-year-old in 2024 who wanted to be calling people all day. <laughs> but now there's someone in that age group that's got their fucking ringer on. What what's wrong with you kids? We don't talk on the phone anymore. Our entire communication Ooh. system is slowly breaking down. Didn't you know this? Um, if someone calls me, I assume they either want money or someone is dead. Text we, me. We've learned there are many ways to become destined for hell, but stealing the, the ambulance from the children's hospital is an extra special version. That's the spicy version. Mm -hmm. um, we've learned that just because there's no money in the bank and the door was open, you're still going to jail. Yeah, I don't think that's fair, but whatever. And finally, we've learned that trying to figure out how to pilot a yacht is best done way before you attempt to steal the yacht. <laughs> yes. And before you have had anything to drink. Because, I mean, I was I was in college long ago. And yes, I did attempt to study drunk on a few occasions. Ask me how well that worked. Okay. You the things, things we learned this week that don't mix with alcohol. Yacht theft and arson. I think we can assume yacht arson. <laughs> like, to give you an idea, I took four years of French and all I can say now is Où est la bibliothèque? <laughs>